Hello, my friends. Hello. How are you? Happy day to you. Good day to you. It's beautiful here in California. We've got sunshine. We've got a little bit of wind, but it has definitely stirred up some of the allergens in the air. So I just got off uh, the live weekly coach call that I do with the members of the healthy thyroid system. It is my happiest event of the week. I love getting together with these thyroid sisters and talking about whatever we want to talk about. So today we talked about histamines and I brought this conversation over to share with, um, all of you here in the big group, because I think this conversation is really important and it's something that we all should understand. So histamines, histamines, it's something that we all know about, but nobody knows what it is. And that is so funny to me. Like, of course we all know what histamines are, but nobody knows what histamines are. Like we go to our doctor and they say, oh yeah, you're having problems with histamines. Here's an allergy pill. So now we take an antihistamine and we have dealt with the histamines, but what are the histamines? What are they? It's like the funniest concept in my mind that there are so many things in our culture that we know about and they're in our conversation, but we don't know what they are. So histamines, I'm going to define them for you. And then we're going to talk about where they come from. But before we get into it, I want to remind you that if you are struggling with histamines, if in this conversation today, you discover that many of these things are an issue for you and you want to find the root cause of the problem, then I would love to help you find solutions. So you can head to www.thyroidbymissy.com and book a time to chat with me or my team. This is a free thyroid call where we can hear about what's going on with you. We can talk about histamines and talk about the testing that will help us end this problem. So what are histamines? Well, I think of them like a spotlight. So histamines are produced by something called mast cells. Those are white blood cells that are everywhere in our body. They're there to protect us. They're there to keep us safe. So when something enters the body that is foreign, and that could be a food, it could be something that touches your skin. It could be something you breathe in. It could be pollen. It could be peanuts. It could be perfume. It can be anything you breathe or touch or taste or drink or smell anything that enters the body that is foreign and your body does not like that thing, a histamine response will be triggered. So your mast cells will send out histamines. Okay. What are histamines? Well, they're spotlights for the problem. They are the coolest thing. They're not good or bad. They are good in the sense that they keep us alive, but we often think of them as bad. I have too many histamines, but in this scenario, the histamines act like a spotlight to shine on the problem. So let's say that you are allergic to peanuts and you eat some peanuts. The histamine response will spotlight the issue. So your immune system can come in and take care of it. Um, I used an analogy today on my call, and this is so funny because this happened recently in my very small town, there was a situation with a man keeping his family hostage. And I I can't remember exactly what it was about. It was something about them run out of peanut butter or something. I can't remember, but anyway, um, a helicopter came in and it was shining a light on the house. And then the cops came and they were negotiating with this man. And this was like three, three blocks away from my house. So I could only hear the loudspeaker side of the cop. And he was saying things like, I understand that's really stressful, sir, but that's not a reason to hold your family hostage. We can fix those problems later, sir. So we hear the cop negotiating with the man in the house, and then we see the spotlight on the house. Okay. This is exactly what histamines do. So histamines spotlight the problem. They say, okay, there is a man holding his family hostage and, or you have breathed in, eaten, touched, or done something that is a problem. And now with the spotlight there, all of the cops know where to go. So they go there, they've surrounded the house. They're talking to the man. Cool. They're solving this problem right now. The problem with histamines is we look at them as something to fix. We look at the histamines as a problem. We say these histamines are the issue in my scenario. That would be saying that the cops that came are the issue. There's so many cops here. They're causing loudness. They're using a loudspeaker. They're the issue. So when you take an antihistamine, Well, it turns off the spotlight and it removes all the cops. Did we take care of the root of the problem? No, the man is still in there complaining about peanut butter or whatever the issue was. I can't remember clearly, but we've still got 
the invader causing the problems. So I want to pull up a visual for you, by the way, if you're here live, say hi, if you're watching the replay, say hello, let me know you're watching the replay. Um, I'm pulling up a visual. This is from Nicole Jardin. Can you see this? If you're listening to this, I will explain it so that, oh, I don't know why it's not working. Here we go. Okay. So these are symptoms of histamine intolerance, things that can happen when you've got a lot of histamines and, or you, your body cannot tolerate the histamines that you're having. So what this means is the spotlight has been turned on the cops have run to the problem. And this is what will happen as a response to that. You can have itching, hives, rashes, acne, eczema, swelling. I think many of us are, are very familiar with this in terms of like touching. If you touch something and you get a rash immediately, that's a histamine response. Um, you can have a sneezing, runny nose, allergies. You can have headaches and specifically migraines that are associated before your period, premenstrual headaches. That's because histamines and estrogen, they run around together. They can create issues. So if you're getting headaches right before your period, it can be histamine related. You can have an inflamed or itchy vulva or vaginal tissue. This histamines can be to blame when that happens and there's no yeast present that happens with a lot of women in my program. Um, so if that's true for you, it could be related to histamines. Uh, you can have loose stools. You can have anxiety, rapid heart rate, skipped heartbeats. You can have extreme menstrual cramps, heavy bleeding with your cycle. It's also associated with endometriosis, fibroids, um, irregular cycles. So anything related to female organ function, there's a lot of histamine receptors on the female organs. So if your histamine levels are out of whack, it will cause issues with your female organs, and then it can cause problems with sleep. Now, all of these things relate back to the thyroid as well, because, um, the hormone interplay is very, very delicate and the thyroid also responds to histamines. So if you're having elevated histamines, it can, it can also manifest as thyroid issues. And of course, a lot of these symptoms are part of having a low thyroid function, some of them with hyperthyroid function, but, um, and in fact, a lot of the symptoms can be the same for hyper or hypo. So you can see from this visual the symptoms of thyroid issues and histamine issues, they cross over. So do we just treat the thyroid or do we treat the histamines or do we, what do we, what do we do? Well, we have to remember that there is an underlying cause for all of this. So in the story, I just told you, there is still a man in a house who's angry and holding his family hostage. Even if we turn off the spotlights and we turn off the cops, he's still there. So this is where deeper testing comes in. And this is why I run my entire programs on deeper testing, because we could guess at symptoms your entire life. We could try raising and lowering your thyroid dose. We could try doing antihistamines. You could avoid the foods forever. You would be guessing at what foods work, what foods don't. I personally went through this in my own thyroid experience because I didn't have the testing to show. And so I eliminated foods. I was down to like five foods I could handle. And even those would trigger sometimes it was getting really frustrating. So with deeper testing, that's where we can find out why you're having these histamine responses. So the biggest thing about histamines I want as a takeaway from this call or this, um, this, uh, live video, what I'm doing here, <laughs> the biggest takeaway I want you to have is histamines are not the problem. Histamines show the problem. And then in a healthy gut, they get broken down and excreted soon after they have done their purpose. Now the gut lining is where we produce an enzyme that breaks up histamines. And if you have infections in your gut, which if you have autoimmune disease, if you have thyroid dysfunction, if you're having hormone imbalances, you probably have infections in your gut. That's just the truth of it. So if you have, you know, sneaky bacteria, parasites, mold, fungus, if you have any sneaky little infections in the gut, you won't produce the enzymes to break apart the histamines. So now your histamine levels will climb and climb and climb and climb and climb. And you can take things that will get rid of the cops and get rid of the helicopter, but we didn't address the underlying problem. So that's why looking into the gut is my first step within the healthy thyroid system. That's my 16 week program that will help you uncover the root cause of your thyroid issues. And let us know if it's a histamine issue as well, um, because it will help show us what's happening in your gut 
that might be preventing production of these enzymes. So once we can see it, well, we can fix it. So we can create a personalized protocol to help you bring down inflammation, restore your gut lining. And then in doing so, it'll help you produce these enzymes so that when histamines are produced, it's no big deal. Your body just removes them. And then you don't have these terrible symptoms that we were just talking about in the video. So I'd love to hear if you're here live. Hello. Hi, Heather. Hi, Amber. Thanks for joining me. If you're here live, tell me, do you struggle with histamine responses? Um, like those I shared in the video, or if you're watching the replay, let me know. And I would love to know if antihistamines have worked for you, what has worked for you, what's working for you. Um, with a lot of my clients, they will, they'll be on chronic antihistamines and there'll be a point where they don't help anymore. And again, it's because we still have an angry man in the house who wants peanut butter and, uh, we're not treating that issue. Get the man some peanut butter. I don't remember what his real thing was, but it was something so funny like that. So, um, yes. Hi, Heather again. Yes. Like, yes. Says Heather to histamine issues. Hi, Tammy. So yeah, let's chat about it in the comments. Let me know if this resonates with you. And if you have struggled with allergies for a long time, if you've tried antihistamines, if you've tried different things to like nasal sprays, steroids, things to bring down histamines, but the second you go off of them, the symptoms return and we got to find out the root cause of it. So if that's true for you and you want help with that, go to www.thyroidbymessy.com. We will do some urine testing. Simple urine testing is where I start. That will show us what's going on in your gut. We can get some solutions so that we can start bringing down the histamines by helping your gut remove them. And in doing so, the symptoms go away. So there's hope. It's so exciting. We can get targeted answers. So drop your questions, reach out, send me a message. You can send me a personal message if you have questions as well. And I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.